the firewall, we have some breaking news we want to be able to bring to you right away. You know, the battle for the church has not been on the uh, front page of the papers, but it's on the front page of all of us that are believers. And probably the most egregious assault on religious liberty was taking place in California with one church in particular where Pastor Cheon and his, uh, and his fellowship were, uh, were so aggressively treated that they were talking about arresting uh, not only the pastors, but the church members and fining them like $1,000 each for attending church. And I want you to hear from Pastor Che directly what's happening. Pastor, welcome on to Firewall. And uh, you got to explain this to us because what's happened is so fast and the intervention has been so uh, profound that I think everybody needs to know about it. So break, break mm -hmm. us in, catch us up on what's happening. Well, first of all, thank you, Lance. It's great to be with you, my friend. And I uh, wish Annabelle, your family, Merry Christmas for me. Uh, but yes, it's unprecedented what happened is because we went to the Supreme Court for asking for an injunction. An injunction would be for the courts to intervene against this draconian threat of arrest. And we're talking about not just arresting me, but church members. And I've said this a number of times, you know, I came from Korea. And my father was a pastor in North Korea when... Uh, uh, Christianity was legal in North Korea, and then in 1950, uh, they arrested all the pastors. It wasn't for the U.S. government army intervening with MacArthur Douglas coming into Korea. My father would have been executed. So we have been told the stories about North Korea becoming communist, and I'm thinking to myself, this is not communist North Korea. This is not communist China. This is the United States, and they want to arrest church members who are law-abiding with no record. They just want to worship. And ironically, also, uh, we're letting out prisoners in, in California because of COVID-19. So you got prisoners being released in the street and church members threatened to get arrested and fined for going to church. And and this is all under under Governor Newsom's uh, order. So, so then uh, something unusual happened because this injunction means that you've really got to get, you're on your way to the Ninth Circuit, right? And right. that's the that's where the case is to be tried. Right. First of all, let me just say that we asked for an injunction right off the bat, and this is before Amy Coney Barrett, of course, became confirmed. So uh, back in September, we asked for an injunction because I got the letter September the 2nd from our city prosecutor saying that we will be arrested. We will be fined $1,000 each time we meet. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of fines uh, coming our way. And so we asked for an injunction, but unfortunately, we had a district federal judge who was appointed by President Obama. And he just said, no, I'm not going to lift the injunction. So then we appealed to the Supreme Court. And sure enough, they got back to us, and this is unprecedented because Matt Staver of Liberty Council, who's done a phenomenal job, by the way, Matt, my attorney, said normally they will wait for you to go to the Ninth Circuit, your appeal, and then once uh, you make your appeal, uh, then they will intervene and give you the injunction if they choose to. But they immediately contacted us right after the November 30th decision of 5-4 for the churches in New York. So we were contacted on Tuesday after Thanksgiving. What happened was is that, you know, you have to go back and forth with Governor Newsom. And so we submitted our uh, appeal for injunction. And then uh, he had to respond. And he responded after Thanksgiving, even though he was supposed to do it before. Again, he's the law to himself. And so he responded on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we get an email from the Supreme Court to Matt Staver's office saying, please send us your response to, to Governor Newsom's response uh, ASAP. And so he did. And then on Wednesday, the Supreme Court contacted, they put us immediately on top of the docket. That's what happened. And so what this signals to me is that they were proactively uh, initiating for us to deal with this issue so they could rule on it quickly. And so they ruled and they said, we will honor the request and all the lower court's uh, decision to persecute you are nullified. And so we are, so I won't get arrested, in other words, that's our church members. Are, and so it was a tremendous victory. But more importantly, basically, they're saying that we're going to side with the church and the church is essential. And uh, regardless of the lockdown, I believe that either the Ninth Circuit will make the decision 
with a signal coming strongly from the Supreme Court, or we'll go to the Supreme Court and now we know we have a majority and the churches will never be locked down again because of a pandemic or a virus. So we are setting a precedence and we are seeing a, a major uh, move of the Supreme Court and, and uh, where they're at. And so the reason why I think this is so important, especially in time of this election, is because I believe that this election is going to go to the Supreme Court. And I don't think it's a coincidence that God would allow Trump to not just nominate, but confirm three justices. I mean, no president does that. I mean, maybe one, if one, or two, but he did with three. And not only three, we're talking about Amy Coney Barrett, who is an evangelical, Catholic, charismatic, who loves Jesus, who's a constitutionalist. And I really believe that uh, they are eager to reestablish the highest law of the land, which is our constitution in America. And, and so I just want to read something which has to do with the, um, uh, I think this was probably the, the comment from Justice Gorsuch in the New York case, because the New York, there was a New York case and your case that both came up and they, and they, they took these as priorities. And Gorsuch says, it is time, past time, to make plain that while the pandemic poses many grave challenges, there is no world in which the Constitution tolerates color-coded executive edicts that reopen liquor stores and bike shops, but shutter, shutters churches, synagogues, and mosques. Out of that list of 10 essential things, what order is the church in in California? It's really about the bottom. In other words, restaurants, again, are closed down, by the way, with a new lockdown, because there's been a spike in the coronavirus, which is so ridiculous, because, you know, I believe in herd immunity. I believe that people should, who are healthy, get it. Of course, we encourage people with high, uh, underlying condition, those who are high-risk people, to stay at home, watch online, so they're not invited. But, of course, we also give them the freedom to choose, so anyone can come to our service, because this is America, so we the people, and we're adults, and we can make a decision if we want to attend service or not. And that's been really our philosophy in all this. And so, um, but what, what's happened, though, is, is that this new lockdown took place because of a spike that took place in California. And, you know, I was just uh, talking to one of our business owners in our church, and he owns a salon. It's a very high end for their major actors in Hollywood. They do the Emmy Award, Academy Award, ESPY Awards, et cetera, right in downtown L.A. And uh, he was just so, uh, so discouraged because he had to lock down again. And uh, he had enough savings to last through the first major lockdown, but he just said, you know, I'm not sure I can make it again. The, we're talking about 19,000 businesses have gone bankrupt in California. So this to me is criminal. And so he's locked us down. And so when things do open up, we're still on the end of the list. In other words, he's putting gyms to open up, salons to open up, restaurants to open up before the church. And to me, I don't know, you know, Sue and I, my wife and I were talking and praying this morning. That I think he comes from a Catholic background. He must have had a real bad nun. He was really wounded because it seems like he's really persecuting the church uh, big time here. You know, I mean, it just doesn't make sense and because we wrote to him and we said we've been essential for 2000 years because, we're, yes, we con we're concerned about COVID-19. We know it's contagious, but we also care about the emotional well-being, the mental well-being and above all the spiritual well-being. I mean, we're talking about suicide is off the charts, alcoholism is off the charts, domestic violence, child abuse. And of course, as pastors, we deal with that. And that's not even on their radar. And the other thing that's really tragic, they're not giving us the science. Yes, there's a spike because there's more, more tests and it, it needs to go through young people. But the death rate is dropping in California. And that's what's so tragic about all this. Yeah, and what they're doing is they're killing 19,000 businesses, which is bankrupting 19,000 uh, families, and, and others also. There are others that are, that are going to be affected by this, more, more coming. And they're doing this because uh, what we have to realize is the left, by its nature, wants to be able to control. I mean, it's weird that you've got Governor Cuomo and Governor Newsom, both, both these radical uh, left Democrats that want to exercise this dictatorial control over the freedoms of their state, all in the name of a crisis. And, and it's almost like it, COVID became a gift for them because it gives them the ability to make these kinds of executive orders that, uh, that actually cut right into the liberties and the civil liberties of citizens who, by nature, 
are, are we cooperate. So we're, you know, are, you did. I mean, for a long time, you were like, along with Jack Hibbs and others, you were actually not having church. And at some point, how did you arrive at the decision that it was time to open up shop again? Well, we knew that uh, this virus was serious, especially as President Trump um, came on uh, middle of March, March 15th, and uh, had mandated 15-day lockdown, which turned into a 30-day lockdown. And we want to submit to governing authorities and health officials and uh, the scientists. So, you know, my brother's a surgeon. We have so many doctors in our church. So it's not that we're against medical science. But when we began to realize when they were saying flatten the curve, there was no curve. The hospitals were empty. We uh, knew some asked Trump to send a hospital ship uh, to Los Angeles and President Trump complied and was just sitting on the dockets for like weeks, months without being used. And so he sent it back. And so I'm not saying that, you know, we've had deaths, but most of them are deaths not from COVID, but with COVID and some other issue like cancer or diabetes or, you know, asthma, emphysema, et cetera. And so uh, we began to realize and consulted with my brother and other physicians in our church. Uh, we decided to open up, but I, to be honest, Lance, I, I felt like God spoke to me. I, I, I felt like I had an encounter with the Lord um, and I wish I had time to share it, but, uh, but basically I felt like the Lord say that uh, we need to take a stand for his glory for the church, we need to obey the commandment, Hebrews 10, 25, not forsake the assembling of the saints, especially as we see the day drawing closer of his second coming. And, you know, it could be a thousand years from now, but it could also be <laughs> next week. And so we decided to open up. I contacted Matt Staver. I met him during the call years when I was helping mobilize for the call. And I asked him if he would be our attorney and uh, just to cover us because we we're going to open up. And sure enough, thank God I did that because we got the letter from our city prosecutor saying that they would arrest me and find our church. And, and so that's where Matt came in. He immediately asked for an injunction here in the district court in California. We lost that. But then he went to the Supreme Court and we won that. And to me, that's very, very significant for all the churches. This is a victory, not just for Harvest Rock Church. This is a victory for the body of Christ and all churches in the United States of America. So now we have a Supreme Court that's going to back up religious liberty and the local church. And so this is very encouraging. And I also think that they're going to back up President Trump with the election fraud that's taking place. And I feel that uh, it's a huge monumental task uh, because of lack of time. But I really believe that as we you know, see the lawsuits of, of course, President Trump has uh, sued Wisconsin and Georgia, et cetera. I believe that uh, the Supreme Court is going to look at this. We're doing this live right now. But I, wanna, I want to just take a break because we're also doing this on television. Okay. So we're going to take a break right now, but I do, I, this is too good to stop. So I want to do another segment with you on okay. where we're going now, which is the prophetic significance of this battle. So we'll be right back.